Today, we're taking a trip down memory lane to explore some historical shenanigans that would give today's viral stories a run for their money. Our ancestors were no strangers to bizarre antics. Long before TikTok challenges and viral memes, they were pulling off stunts that would make even the boldest influencer blush. Without further ado, let's dive into 10 bizarre historical events that would definitely go viral today. We start our journey off at number 10, where in 1973, Mao Zedong, the president of China at the time, jokingly offered to give America 10 million Chinese women. Back in the funky 70s, there was an unexpected bromance brewing between Chairman Mao and Henry Kissinger, the brains behind President Nixon's security team. Picture this. Mao and Kissinger shooting the breeze about potential trade deals, when suddenly Mao drops a bombshell. How about tossing 10 million Chinese ladies into Uncle Sam's lap as a gift? Yeah, you heard that right, 10 million? Now Kissinger, being the suave diplomat he was, didn't miss a beat. He called it a novel proposition and suggested they give it some serious thought. But let's be real here. It was all just two powerful dudes sharing a laugh, not a serious proposal. Fast forward to today. Can you imagine the chaos if Kim Jong-un and Obama's national security guru were caught chuckling over a similar idea? Twitter would explode faster than you can say diplomatic incident. So let's raise a glass to the wacky world of international relations, where even the most outlandish conversations can spark a firestorm of controversy. And while Mao and Kissinger's banter may seem bizarre to us now, who knows? Maybe one day, our own political antics will be the stuff of legend. Until then, let's keep the laughs rolling. Just maybe steer clear of gift-giving suggestions involving millions of unsuspecting citizens. Moving on to number nine. In the early 20th century, the transition from summer to fall wasn't just about swapping out swimsuits for sweaters. It also involved a sartorial switch-up from straw Panama hats to more formal felt ones. This annual hat exchange typically took place around September 15th, signaling the end of summer and the start of a more distinguished look for men. But here's the catch. If you dared to hold onto your straw hat past its seasonal expiration date, you risked more than just a few side eyes. Rumor has it that scoffs and snickers would rain down upon you like confetti at a parade, with some folks even resorting to extreme measures like stealing and stomping on your beloved headgear. Talk about hat shaming on a whole other level. Fast forward to 1922, and the people had had enough. Fueled by a rebellious spirit and a fervent desire for sartorial freedom, they rose up against the oppressive fashion regime in what can only be described as a hat-related revolution. For days on end, riots engulfed the streets as thousands fought tooth and nail, or should I say brim and crown, for their right to choose their own headwear. And let me tell you, this wasn't just a battle of style. It was a fight for individuality, for the freedom to express oneself without fear of ridicule or retribution. Many brave souls endured great injury in the name of fashion democracy, proving that sometimes the most unlikely of accessories can become symbols of resistance. After all, fashion may be fleeting, but the spirit of rebellion? That's timeless. Number eight brings us to the annals of collegiate history. There's one name that stands out among the rest. Lothrop Withington Jr., the Harvard freshman who made waves by swallowing a live fish as part of his campaign for class president. Talk about a publicity stunt. But here's the catch. Instead of fading into obscurity like your average daredevil, Withington unwittingly sparked a bizarre trend that would sweep college campuses across the nation in the late 1930s. Yep, you guessed it. Goldfish swallowing became all the rage with students from coast to coast getting in on the fishy fun. According to Time Magazine's 1939 report, last week Joe College was busy gulping goldfish with each daring participant adding their own twist to the culinary adventure. From sprinkling salt or slathering on mayo to washing it down with anything from milk to soda pop. But one thing remained constant. Each goldfish met its fate while still swimming. Now, if Withington were around today, I'd wager he'd fit right in with the wild and wacky antics of modern college life. Just imagine him icing his bros or taking part in some other equally outlandish stunt. After all, a little fish swallowing is nothing compared to the madness of 21st century campus culture. 
Fast forward now to, ah, the swinging 50s, a time of poodle skirts, Elvis Presley, and apparently cramming yourself into phone booths like sardines in a can. Yep, phone booth stuffing was the wacky craze that took the world by storm, starting across the pond before making its grand debut in the good old US of A in spring 1959. Picture this, kids from coast to coast squeezing themselves into those narrow spaces like they were competing in a human Tetris championship. Some got creative, stacking themselves horizontally like a game of human Jenga. It was madness, it was mayhem, and it was downright hilarious. But the pinnacle of phone booth stuffing glory came in March 1959, all the way from South Africa, where 25 brave souls managed to shoehorn themselves into a single booth. Talk about a record-breaking feat. And just to add a cherry on top of the absurdity Sunday, the phone even rang during the stunt, but alas, there was no one able to answer it. But as quickly as it had burst onto the scene, the phone booth stuffing craze fizzled out by the end of 1959, leaving behind nothing but memories and a few lingering questions about the sanity of humanity. So the next time you're feeling nostalgic for the simpler times of yesteryear, just remember the wild and wacky world of phone booth stuffing, a trend that may have been short-lived but will live on forever in the annals of absurdity. Moving on to number six, to the opulent halls of Victorian Europe, where there existed a craze that surpassed all others, the feverish obsession with orchids, known as orchidelirium. Imagine a world where the measure of one's status wasn't counted in social media followers, but in the rare and exotic blooms adorning one's greenhouse. Orchids were the ultimate symbol of wealth and refinement, coveted by society's elite for their beauty and rarity. But the demand for these delicate flowers far exceeded the supply, leading to a frenzy of botanical exploration. Wealthy enthusiasts spared no expense, assembling teams of intrepid adventurers known as hunters to scour the far corners of the globe in search of new orchid species. These botanical expeditions were no small undertaking, often involving perilous journeys into uncharted territories in pursuit of the elusive blooms. And when a new species was discovered, it became the centerpiece of extravagant auctions where prices soared to dizzying heights. However, as the orchid trade boomed, so too did the threat to their survival. Rampant overcollection and habitat destruction pushed many species to the brink of extinction prompting international concern. In response, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora was established in 1973. This landmark agreement aimed to regulate and restrict the trade of endangered species, including wild orchids, in order to protect them from further harm. And thus, the era of wild orchid collection came to an end, replaced by a new era of conservation and sustainability. Today, orchids continue to captivate our imaginations with their beauty and diversity, reminding us of the delicate balance between human desire and the preservation of nature's wonders. Number five brings us back in time to the simpler days of rural America, where kids found their thrills not in flashy magic acts, but in the humble act of pole sitting. Long before David Blaine mesmerized audiences with his daring stunts, Youngsters across the heartland were perching atop neighborhood telephone poles, seeking the ultimate test of endurance and bravery. The pole-sitting craze took hold in the mid-1920s, spreading like wildfire through small towns and rural communities. With the backdrop of the bustling jazz age, these daring youths constructed makeshift seats atop the poles, challenging each other to see who could withstand the dizzying heights the longest. As the competition heated up, so did the stakes. Some of the most fearless pole sitters, whose mothers evidently didn't scold them to come down, could endure the precarious perch for days on end, defying gravity and common sense with their remarkable feats of endurance. But alas, all good things must come to an end, and the pole sitting craze met its demise with the onset of the Great Depression. As economic hardships swept the nation, the simple joys of rural life gave way to harsher realities, and the era of pole sitting faded into memory. Yet, the spirit of those daring young souls lives on, 
a testament to the timeless pursuit of adventure and the boundless imagination of youth. Now, for those with an ear for history, there's a notable 10-minute recording that precedes Ronald Reagan's presidential legacy by two decades. Titled, Ronald Reagan Speaks Out Against Socialized Medicine, this audio gem captures the voice of Reagan, then a private citizen, as he passionately warns listeners about the perils of government control over health care. Released long before Reagan ascended to the highest office in the land, this recording serves as a poignant reminder of his steadfast beliefs in individual freedoms and limited government intervention. In it, he articulates concerns about the potential threats posed by federal involvement in health care to the liberties of everyday Americans. Interestingly, the American Medical Association played a pivotal role in disseminating this LP as part of its Operation Coffee Cup campaign. This campaign aimed to rally public opposition against the Democrats' proposals to expand Social Security to include health care coverage. In essence, Reagan's early advocacy against socialized medicine not only foreshadowed his future political agenda, but also reflected broader debates surrounding the role of government in health care policy during that era. So the next time you're perusing the annals of political history, don't forget to tune into Reagan's prophetic words on health care a timely reminder of the enduring importance of preserving individual liberties in the face of ever-changing political landscapes. Transitioning now to the dark days of prohibition, when the thirst for alcohol outweighed the fear of consequences, desperate souls turned to industrial alcohol as a last resort. But little did they know this desperate gamble would lead to a deadly game of cat and mouse with the government. With potable alcohol in short supply, bootleggers and drinkers alike resorted to stealing industrial alcohol, the kind typically used for disinfecting wounds or fueling machinery. Yet obtaining this coveted liquid gold came with a dangerous catch. It was often tainted with lethal substances. Faced with a rampant wave of alcohol theft and consumption, the U.S. government took drastic measures to curb the problem. Enter the era of poisoned alcohol a sinister solution aimed at deterring would-be imbibers by rendering the stolen alcohol deadly if ingested. By mid-1927, the government's denaturing formulas had evolved into deadly concoctions, laced with an array of poisons including kerosene, brucine, akin to strychnine, gasoline, and a litany of other toxic substances. These lethal cocktails turned a once sought-after elixir into a deadly gamble with every sip. The consequences were devastating. By the time Prohibition staggered to an end in 1933, nearly 10,000 lives had been claimed by the poisoned alcohol, a tragic toll that came to be known as the Chemist's War of Prohibition. In a world where Twitter erupts into chaos at the mere sight of a foot of snow, it's difficult to fathom the pandemonium that would ensue if the dust clouds of AD 536 swept through today's society. Historical records paint a chilling picture of this catastrophic event which plunged the world into darkness and despair for over a year. Archaeological evidence suggests that the dust clouds, possibly triggered by a volcanic eruption or other natural calamity, caused temperatures to plummet, resulting in frosty summers and brutally harsh winters. But this wasn't just a case of mild inconvenience, it was a cataclysm of epic proportions. The chilling aftermath saw nearly a third of Europe's population wiped out, with death rates soaring to unthinkable levels, reaching as high as 90% in some northern regions. Imagine the scenes of devastation and despair that would unfold in today's hyper-connected world as communities grapple with the unimaginable loss and chaos wrought by such a calamity. From frantic social media updates to desperate calls for help, the sheer scale of the disaster would reverberate across the globe, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. As we reflect on the haunting echoes of history, let us not only marvel at the resilience of those who survived such dark times, but also heed the solemn reminder of the fragility of human existence in the face of nature's awesome power. Finally, at number one, cast your mind back to the frosty January day of President Dwight D. Eisenhower's inauguration in 1953. Amidst the pomp and circumstance, a rather unexpected moment unfolded. 
Eisenhower found himself unexpectedly lassoed by a man on horseback, much to the amusement of his vice president, Richard Nixon. Now picture a similar scenario with President Joe Biden. Can you imagine the uproar? It would certainly put a damper on the grandeur of the occasion, but let's not judge too harshly. The 1950s were a different time with a different set of expectations for presidential decorum. Back then, such impromptu displays of cowboy antics were met with chuckles rather than gasps of disbelief. So, as we reminisce about the curious case of the lassoing cowboy, let's also remember the unique charm and eccentricities of bygone eras, a time when even the most solemn of occasions could be punctuated by a touch of unexpected whimsy. And that'll do it for 10 historical events that, if occurred today, would undoubtedly break the Internet. Each one of the events listed in this video would ignite a global conversation, proving once again that truth is often stranger than fiction. We may not have had the Internet back then, but these events remind us that our past was every bit as vibrant, controversial, and downright bizarre as our present. So, next time you see a viral trend or a shocking news story, remember that history had its share of internet-breaking moments, too. Until next time, stay curious, friend.